Get set for another epic episode of This Week in Music. We have Rob Michaels in the studio. Woohoo! Tim Bate is back to read the news. Tune in right now. another episode of This Week in Music. Now, I was not lying when I said this show is going to be epic because we've got musical guests in studio, two musical guests. We've got two guitars. This is going to be awesome. We're going to have another performance. Um, Bitter Beta is back in the studio with me to read some news. Um, now, before we get into the news and get into the hilarity that is this show and the music, of course, because that's what this show is all about, um, I want to just remind you guys that we love hearing from you in the chat room. Right now, you guys are live in the chat room. This is awesome. Um, keep logging in. And don't forget, if you're watching the show on the weekend or the week after, we love to hear your thoughts. Please hit us up on Twitter. Um, my Twitter is at This Is Asha. You can contact the show, which is at T-W-I-M-U-S-C. That's Twi Music. Uh, we've got a bunch of amazing shows on the This Weekend Network. Go to at T-W-I Network. Um, and also, this show is a free download on iTunes. You can just type in This Weekend Music um, in the iTunes search little thingy there. I know that has an official name. I just call it a thingy right now. Type it in. It's a free subscription, free download. Um, a bunch of people are doing that. They love this show, so we love that. So uh, welcome, Tim, back into yes, the studio. Uh, Asha K. Are you ready for another show? I can't wait to read. I love reading. This is actually Getting good the, at it. Yeah, no, this, we're stepping things up in the studio here. We've got a new setup. We've got couches here. We've got a teleprompter ready to go. Yes. So, because you asked for it, people. Yes, we did. We want to connect. We are going to connect. So I think we should just get into the news right now. Channeling your gig last night at Spaceland. I oh, <laughs> that was a fun gig. Good times at Spaceland. But that's not the music news. That's not the music news. That's the music pass. So yes. let's get on with the music news. Yeah, let's do it. Sasha Baron Cohen, better known as Ali G in Borat, great movies, Bruno, right? Yep. Yeah, he's gonna play Freddie Mercury in an as yet untitled biopic. Nice. So you know, Mercury's final years, he had AIDS, and the related death will not be in this '91. Well, it won't be in the film, but there's no director yet. <laughs> Something happened. But there's do we a think? He, do we think he can pull it off? Look, look at this picture. They look so much alike. So I think that is. I think it's a good casting physically. Uh, Music-wise, I don't know. Like you said, they're not going to portray his 91 death. Um, they're just going to make it about the music, which, you know, I, people love the music. Uh, yeah. I think that his death was a big part of, you know, Queen and Freddie Mercury, so I don't know. Maybe they'll change that. It'd be interesting to see who the director is. I think the casting's great because, like yeah. you said, they look alike. And let, let's face it, man, this guy, Sasha Baron Cohen, is like an unbelievable actor. He's, he is amazing. He, yeah, he's just, like, infallible. So, I mean, he's going to... Do a great job, and as far like as far as like singing, like we talked yeah. about the Doors, okay. you know, Jim Morrison, uh, obviously Freddie Mercury. Val Kilmer uh, played right. Jim he Morrison. sung that Doors track. I don't know. I mean, it's 2010. You can auto tune. Right. You know what I mean? Justin Bieber can sound like freaking Freddie Mercury. Oh whoa! Hold the phone. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> saying. But no, that is a good point. You know, Pro Tools auto tune. So I I don't know. I I kind of just want to hear Freddie Mercury sing Freddie Mercury. Put the playback, I said. Yeah, just do a little lip syncing, you know, Britney style. And all. Wear the mankini, whatever works. Yeah, he's going to pull it off. He's going to pull it off. <laughs> all right, let's keep moving on. Uh, all right, Jack White has invented a new form of vinyl. Yeah, Dead Weather is releasing their single, Blue Blood Bones, on three different forms of vinyl. 7-inch, 12-inch. My mind goes somewhere else. I know, to where? Quiznos. Oh, okay. You know, sandwich shop. And uh, the new format, they're calling it the Triple Decker Record. Well, he, Jack White is a pioneer, so maybe he, he can pull it off, but we'll see. I don't know. And if you're interested to see what this Triple Decker record is, um, he's actually made a tutorial video. Go to YouTube, type in Triple Decker Vinyl, Triple Decker Record. He's made a two-minute video. You can find out everything you need to know about that. So thanks, Jack White. What were you uh, saying about Jack White before? I love looking at that guy. He looks like Johnny Depp from, like, Edward Scissorhands hey, or something like that. What's no, your He's mouth? very character -y like you know? Did you say he had a face for radio? Yeah, you know, in a cool way. 
Yeah, he does have a face made for real. <laughs> he looks like he's it's Halloween, 365 days of the year. There you go. That's that's true. That's you, true. You know, no, but I love Jack White, man. He's a pioneer. Maybe he can revive vinyl. If anybody can do it, Jack White can do yeah, it. Yeah, because listen, vinyl does have a warmer sound. I mean, I hate to use that cliche word, but there's definitely like an intimacy listening to music on a phonograph opposed to like CDs and tapes. Or an iPod or something. Right. You pressed MP3. Yeah, because have you ever listened to a, a record? I have. Look, my dad has a record player that, uh, you know, we listen to all the time. He still listens to the old Tracy Chapman records. The, one of the first things that he ever bought me was a Kylie Minogue record. This is in the 80s. Yes, Kylie Don't Minogue. judge me. I love Kylie Minogue. I didn't even Minogue. know she was on vinyl. That's she unbelievable. Was. Summer hits of 88 or something. God, impressive information. I know. See? All right, the Arcade Fire, uh, every week this band is in the news. <laughs> They're splitting up in 2020. That's not soon enough. Oh, Split God. up now. All right, <laughs> Win, God. Win Butler says he can't see himself doing this in 10 years. Duh, right? Yeah. You know, we've been, they, 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 we've been in the band as long as the Beatles. Give me a okay. break with this now guy. Now we definitely need to hold the phone because- Time like, out. You may have been, uh, I could say, look, I've been a, a, alive as long as the Beatles have been putting out records. But the fact is, the Beatles have put out 12 studio albums. Arcade Fire, what, three? Right. You know, you don't want to go comparing yourself to the Beatles, period. It's like the Beatles comparing themselves to Jesus. You know, it's yeah, yeah. just, uh, I wouldn't go there. And what about this? Like, the Beatles records are so dynamic. I mean, you have, like, Rubber Soul, and then you have, like, Sgt. Peppers. Peppers. The I mean, White Arcade album. Fire is just, like, one tune for three records. And they're, <laughs> come on, man. It's just like, you can't even, <laughs> like, you love Arcade Fire. We're going to get to you later. Don't worry. Uh, no, I love the Beatles. Oh, uh, I love the Beatles, see? too. And I, I, I think, like, you get a band like the Beatles, I mean, that's like a once in, like, a century, you know, get to get four musicians like that. Well, it and just doesn't happen. They and changed not just music history, but world history with right. their music. Yeah. So. And those, all, those records sound so different, and they're all so great and dynamic. Yeah. And that's, like, a really... You know, they're a power band. I know. Not to be reckoned with. And look, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. But look, you know, they say they're going to be splitting up. There are some other artists that have also done the whole splitting up. And wait, we're back. There's R.E.M., Jay-Z, Eminem. I think it's a publicity stunt, maybe. Yeah, they're Brett Favre. They're preparing Favre, us. Favre. Brett Favre. Brett Favre. 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 Something about Mary. He said he was back, and then he was done, <laughs> and he's back, and now he's done. And I he's back. Know. He's back. Anyway, Arcade Fire, no offense, I just don't get it. But anyway, okay. Britain. Britain gets a new opera house, the King's Head Pub, right? So uh, London's most famous fringe venue. Yes, it you know, is. They're trying to get away from the elitist mentality towards a more intimate setting. Look, I think that's cool, something different. You know, they're creating, they're trying to maybe fill a gap in the arts that they see over there in London because yeah. the West End is huge. Got it. The whole it plays, operas, musicals, it's a, it's a big deal over there. And there's probably a bunch of people that can't afford tickets, so. Yeah, but I mean, like we've talked about it, to enjoy a play or an opera, you kind of have to have like a little bit of intelligence and stuff. So you'd never go. It's there. not like seeing Expendables for eleven dollars at the ArcLight. No, I went. I went and saw the Glass Menagerie last Saturday. It was unbelievable. You did? Yeah, but okay. it's three hours, and it's like Tennessee Williams writing. It's really good. I just, nice. you know, I think that there's always going to be that uh, that class level attached to plays and opera. And I'm not saying, well, clearly people, <laughs> Asha K, Tim Bader, vote. The class. Who's the class? Who are the classiest? Uh, like, uh, uh. No, but well, look, they're saying that this and uh, this new venue, the the most expensive tickets are going to be fifteen pounds, which is about thirty dollars, a little bit less. So maybe that'll be good. Trial and error, I say. Try it out, see what happens. Yeah, it's a good sentiment, I and mean, if it, if it works, you know, good on you. Yeah. But we'll see. We Only shall see. Only time will tell. But we're staying in England for the news for right we now. We are because Bruce Dickinson, lead singer of Iron Maiden, is an airline pilot. <laughs> what the hell? Wow. Now cool. marketing director for Astraris, a Gatwick-based charter airline. Which company. is a, a London-based airport. Look, right. I think good on him. There are so many celebrities who do that. John Travolta, he pilots one of the uh, Qantas airplanes. Right, He's an right, ambassador right. around the world. So now it's Bruce Dickens. The thing is, he's not giving up music. There, look, there he is. There he is on stage with the maiden. <laughs> there he is in Gatwick Airport, wheeling his little uh, pilot bag and his like um, polite little haircut. Um, <laughs> that was great. Did you guys see that picture? Wasn't that awesome? that guy. I would not get on a plane with that guy. Why That's not? Just me. I'd love to get on a pl uh, plane with Bruce uh, flying here like, all right, folks, today we're going to be playing Flight of Icarus. Yeah! Wouldn't that be so cool? No, it would not, not be cool. Like, what? who, is the, who is the guy that flew his own plane 
that went down with like a, a few chicks. Was Buddy it, Holly? No, no, he it was the pilot. John was it George Denver? Kennedy? Was it George Kennedy? Jack, Ken jo no, wait. John, John Kennedy. John, John Kennedy Jr., that guy. Yes. What, I mean, listen. Sad, really sad news. <laughs> Is there a George Kennedy? Is there a George I Kennedy? I have no idea, no. <laughs> Michael Jackson Kennedy? What At any rate, hell? I'd rather have that guy Scully fly my plane. I don't want to have Sully, control of a plane. Sully, not Scully. Sully, Scully, whatever. That dude land landed a plane in the Hudson, Hudson River. That's the guy I want my pilot. Not some dude from Iron Maiden singing. That's insanity. I mean, that guy's brain's got to be fried. All of a sudden, Actually, you true. land into a bunch of trees. Guy, for, <laughs> guy forgets to put the landing gear down. Look at this guy. Oh, Are you kidding me? I no chance of I getting on the plane with that guy. Yeah, I, I, Iron Maiden. I like you know, good good vocals. Better than so. Stephen Slade. You, you'd rather have you wouldn't have him as your air hosty. No chance. Okay. No, no chance. Jet, Jet Blue. Right? It's not like a whole different it's like ball a game. Video game like plane, isn't it? Is it real? Jet Blue. Obviously not. Uh, oh, but there God. you go. That's Bruce Dickinson. So what else is happening? Well, we have a musical based on Cher's life and career. It's it's in the works right now, and I mean. Director Andy Fickman says she's a fairly phenomenal character. We actually came up with a new word before when we were talking about this. What was the word? Not phenomenal. Phenomical? <laughs> phenomical. Phenomical. Which is basically phenomenal and comical in one, which basically sums up shit, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely like a polarizing figure. I mean, there's she's always dressed like a tree or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not make a musical, right? Yeah, uh, look, uh, this actually, right now, this Cher new segment brings me to our first segment within a segment we like to call Sue the Photographer. Let's bring out this picture of Cher because it really is phenomenal, really. Whoa. Sue that photographer. Whoa. Is that a comic book? <laughs> That's real life, my dear. That, that is real is like, life. You know what she looks like right there? There's a video Who? game called War of Worldcraft, and she is definitely a wicked villain. War huh? of Worldcraft? I think so, right? Is that what it's called? Wow. No. World Come on. of Warcraft. War of oh Warcraft, World of Warcraft. Look, I can barely turn a computer on, but okay. I know I'd stay away from that chick. First of all, it's World of Warcraft. All the gamers out there are hating you right now. And everyone in the comic uh, in the chat room is like Lady Gaga's mother. Well, could be. Could be. Apple doesn't fall far, far from the tree then, you know. That would be but one hell of a musical. You know what? As a matter of fact, <laughs> That operetta or musical you could sell for 15 pounds. I knew you'd guess you'd that, see You it. know what? It's making sense. You don't All have to have intelligence to see together. that. Yeah, there you go. No intelligence. There you go. Get no lucky, intelligence Cher. allowed. Share the musical. Uh, another polarizing family in yes. figure is the Jackson family. They will uh. not leave well enough alone. Poor Michael. AEG Live is calling their suit against them unsustainable. Unsubstantiated. And substantiated. Wow. And without merit. Katherine Jackson accuses AEG Live of crediting the circumstances that led to her son's death. You know, Dr. Conrad Murray. Ugh. Now, that's Michael's doctor, and he, Michael hired him Yeah, not himself, AEG. not AEG. That's what AEG are arguing. Look, I just think, look, leave the poor doctor alone. He's been in court so many times with the same thing. Why is Katherine now sticking in her nose? Doesn't she have grandchildren to look after? Like, how about you do that first instead of, you know, trying to get more money from Michael's death. Yeah. He's already, re you know, making a DVD, posthumous CD releases, a uh, video game based on his dancing, like... Wait a uh, second. <laughs> Didn't Michael sell Neverland? Doesn't he have enough cash and the Jackson family have enough cash? Obviously Let the not. poor guy just rest in peace, you know? It's amazing enough, this is quoted by Jay Moore, that he came to this planet as a nice young black man born into this world and he died an old Korean woman. That's amazing in itself. Rest in peace, Michael. Oh my God. Please. The Jackson family is well to do. They don't need money from another lawsuit. So look, I just hope that uh, as much as Dr. Conrad Murray probably did the wrong thing. This is the other thing. He probably did the wrong thing, but like you were saying, how many people say no to Michael Jackson? Oh, yeah. How many people? Come on. You're Michael Jackson's doctor, and he says, like, excuse me, I would like some heroin drops for my eyes and some fire for my earlobes and 27 Vicodin. What are you going to say? You know, Mike, I don't think that's a good idea. You're fired. Oh, here you go. Here are the eye drops. Have some heroin, Mike. Come on. I mean, you can't that's... say no to the king of pop. <laughs> that's true. That is another good point that people that probably I hope it's been brought up because that's a good defense to have for Conrad Murray. Yeah, that guy. He was just 
Doing his toll. I don't man. think it'll get him off scot free, though. But anyway, uh, still on the music news, away yeah. from the Jackson family. Though. Right, we've got MTV. Now let's say move over MTV because Vivo is number one for music videos. Yes. Uh, MTV lost that battle years ago. Yes. MTV yeah, announced too. it was the number one music destination on the web. Now, Comscore stats for August show that Vivo is number one in music video viewing. Yeah, but does MTV really even care about music these days anyway? Like, listen, MTV. You've got the Jersey Shore. A plus, man. Screw the videos. Bring on the situation. The blowouts. Schnooky. Just all day long run that. That is a cash cow. It really is, though. Like, I, they've got, they're onto a winner with that kind of stuff. They started with the music. They abandoned it 20 years ago. Let Vivo have their day in the spotlight. And it's kind of true, though, because when you go to YouTube, pretty much every second video that you watch is going to be a Vivo video. So yeah. that makes sense. You know, most people go to Vivo and YouTube to watch videos. I do. A, a little bit trivia. When did MTV stop playing videos? Like 1989? What, like, honestly. Probably the year I was born. When, when did Vivo the... killed the radio star. <laughs> oh, God. Unbelievable. The radio Vivo killed the radio star. star. First video ever to be played on MTV the by Buggles. the Buggles. Ah, ah touche. Ah, yes. What year was the real world? Did it come out on MTV? I have no idea. I don't watch the real world. Because that's world. when the videos died there. So, I mean, MTV has yeah. no business. Just Jersey Shore it up. Music television has no business doing music. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. <laughs> You're out. All right, moving on. Uh, oh yeah, the fate of Billboard magazine is tied directly into the music industry, yes. both which are sinking ships. Yeah. Major labels feeling the crunch are spending less on advertising, which is the lifeblood of the magazine. Pretty much. You know, would you subscribe to the new Billboard? And let's let's face it, do you even subscribe to the old Billboard? I don't subscribe to. I look on the website every week just to see what's happening. But there's not it's there's not very in depth. I don't find a lot of my music news there. To be honest, I mm. would go elsewhere any day. I kind of think, why don't you just put all your music content online where people can watch videos and listen to music and just phase the magazine out altogether? Yeah. I think it's more profitable. I it makes agree. sense to me. I mean, what are you going to do? The print industry is suffering right now, the music industry is suffering. They just have got to put all of their funding into the internet. They have to, they've yeah. got to do it. I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about Michael Jackson dying as a Korean woman. I can't get that comment out of my head. <laughs> That's Jay Moore. I'm Wars. sorry. That's where I heard it. I gotta give him credit where credit's due. All right, anyway, keep uh, going. Keep okay, <laughs> all right, Michael Jackson. Finally, in music news, it's football season. Yes, uh, it started. Yay! And I watched the Black Manning Bowl. Oh, yeah, the Manning Bowl. I did. Baby I knew the brother got win. killed. Uh, the Black Eyed Peas will be performing at this year's Super Bowl. They Yay. perform everywhere. Come here, give it a break. Every sport they perform. Yeah, it was like they had the NBA halftime show, and it's like, come on, tonight is going to be a good night. I just hope they don't sing that. Look, they, they say they're going to perform at the Super Bowl in Dallas, mm -hmm. um, and they're pro probably the only act that's performed at a Super Bowl that's under 55. Well, maybe actually, no, that's not true, though. No, I think... What about um, uh, <sighs> Johnny Jackson, Justin Timberlake? Yeah, yeah, you know what? That's right. Yeah. So but as of late, Britney Spears they had, was also but they, had, they had Bruce Springsteen, The Who. Well, they're over 55. Right, but, but with like the last three Super Bowls, right? I don't know. I haven't been in America that long, but last year was The Who, and I have to say, they were pretty good. I really liked that show. Yeah. I thought it was epic. The thing with Black Eyed Peas is that I'm not really excited to see them. And if they do sing Tonight's Gonna Be a Good Night, that's kind of redundant because it's already halfway through the game. Like, what are you trying to predict? It depends what team you laid your money on. Then right. tonight is going to be a good night, <laughs> you know. And one team that's not going to be there are the Dallas Cowboys. They are in a lot of trouble. Oh, oh really? Too. Yeah, How that... can you tell already? Because they've lost two games and uh, they got to play tell? Texas. If they lose this this week, they're totally toast. This is what I don't get about American football. There are so many teams that not every team plays every team each season, and the season is so short. That doesn't <laughs> happen in any other country except here. Only in America. Yeah, people. but every game counts. That's the That's thing. That's the same elsewhere, but they just play more games. Let me let me ask you this question. And you guys, do you think that the Black Eyed Peas are going to lip sync that show, oh. or do you think they're really going to sing? Fergie's definitely going to lip sync. Will I Am is just going to be playing a computer through his mouth somehow, so he's he's not going to. And can you him. concentrate when the, when the Black Eyed Peas are performing? Can any male concentrate on anything besides Fergie's ass? <laughs> 
Let's face it. I mean, my ears just go, woo, and I'm looking at that chick's body, and she's moving around, shaking it. It's nuts. And what did I tell you before when I came on the show? Will I am has got all the publishing in the music industry. He does. He writes all the pop songs Every today. song is on the radio. He's got it monopolized. It's unbelievable. You know oh. what? Have him play. I don't care. <laughs> you know, Vader you know, and his finest. Because I saw The Who last year, and I love The Who. I what a great, great rock band. You know, and I, I think... I think they played live. I'm not 100% sure. I know the boss did. But like, of the Robert did. Daltrey, man. Just try a little Roger bit. Roger you know? Daltrey. Did you say Robert? No, I said Roger. Oh. And he looked like a grandma up there with his, <laughs> his specs and his curly hair and his like moo moo. He is old though. But just give it a shot, man. Just try. <laughs> give me something. I mean, I don't know. Pete try. Townsend was still doing his thing. Yeah, he was. He was. So anyway, I, I digress. I digress. And one other thing in the news that we have today is um, American Idol news. You've got it. Yes. Go ahead, take it away, Asha K. The uh, judges were officially announced yesterday. If you didn't catch it, Randy Jackson is staying on. Everyone else is out. Um, Steven Tyler, Jennifer Lopez, the official two other judges, judges which make up the three judge panel. I think that's going to be, well, I'm interested to see Steven Tyler. Look, I think it'll be cool. It'll be a, a, an interesting new dynamic. I don't think it'll last, though. I think everyone knows that it's not going to last. I don't know. I love Steven Tyler. I think he's a really charismatic guy. He's really charming, and I, he just tends to make whatever he touches work. Get the Midas touch. Right. On the other hand, J-Lo can just sabotage everything. <laughs> Movies, videos, video awards. So I don't know. And then Randy Jackson. Marriages. Hey, you little pitchy dog. I mean, what's, what's, he's been neutral anyway. Listen, so I, you're I, neutral, negative, and positive. You think it'll be it's all right? Just, I don't know. Let's just face it. You watch that show because Simon Cow would tell people how it is. Yeah. And, and that's it. You know, and, that, that. and then you had that natural push and pull because Paul Abdul had the nice. You well, know, look, warm, we've got a comment in the chat succeed. room saying Steven Tyler is going to be the new Paul Abdul. Agree? Disagree? I don't know. You know. You know, I don't know. I have no idea because maybe you're right. Steven Tyler is kind of like a nice guy, so maybe he'll be the Paul Abdul, and J Lo will be the Ellen. I will don't know. Be, no, she'll be the Simon. She could be oh, a great okay. bitch. That's a good comment. That's the best comment we've had in that chat room. Yeah, it's pretty good. And finally, music news. I just want to say a big happy birthday to the one, the only, the boss. Bruce Springsteen, yes, I believe he's Jersey. 62. Asbury Park. 23rd of September. Still that is doing his birthday. It. Remember it because he's the boss. He will get you. Indeed. Just saying. So, yeah, well, there you go. How That's did you go with the teleprompter today? I don't know. I'm still figuring it out, taking some direction, you know, but I feel like I'm connected with you people rather than, you know, like having my head in the trash can. And it's <laughs> a big head. So, I mean, judging from what people are saying on the uh, chat room, I, I think they like the teleprompter. I think so. Good job. Applause. All right, that's the music news for this week. Uh, we now have our website highlights. All right, this week's website highlight is musicthinktank.com, and that is spelled how you think it is spelled, musicthinktank.com. Um, the site is managed by hypebot.com, which is another great site if you want to look up digital music news, what's happening out there. Um, and for industry music news as well. Now, anyone can, contribute, anyone can contribute relevant articles to Music Think Tank. This is the cool thing. Um, you begin by signing up and then logging in to publish your post directly to Music Think Tank Open. Popular articles are occasionally moved to the front of the site. You know, you've got to be popular. You've got to put your stuff out there, make your, make your voice heard. Contributors own and operate this blog. Um, you can actually click on the website for more information how it works. It was founded in, on March 4th, uh, I was going to say 1988, 2008, I'm sorry. And the goal of this structure is to attract smart music industry thinkers and writers that want to build a brand uh, with a group of like-minded individuals, which is cool. I like that. Um, I've actually read a few of the articles and they're really cool. They're just average Joes, you know, contributing articles. So. If you're interested, do it, check it out. Uh, Music Think Tank is currently generating over 25,000 unique visitors per month. That was actually, um, t this, uh, these stats are from this time last year. So that's probably doubled now. Uh, there you go. So musicthinktank.com, check it stats. out. Tasty stats, tasty we stats. We like the stats. We definitely like the stats. And, Numbers uh, guy, crunching numbers. Are you a numbers guy? Yes. No, you're I'm not. definitely not an English guy. No, you definitely. As you can tell by my video. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy? No, I'm just kidding. Stay uh, classy, <laughs> Okay, look, it's time to introduce our musical guests of the show. Uh, he is a Hollywood boy born and bred. You may have heard of him on the scene if you've been around. He just played the Viper Room. I checked him out. It was awesome. He rocked the house. 
Uh, he was signed to a, a label only six months after he started learning guitar. He basically knows the who's who in the music industry. Um, he is Rob Michaels. Welcome to This Week in Music. Great to have you here. And your guitarist, Jimmy Croker. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, hi, Rob. <laughs> you, guys, I love, you guys are like brothers, but not brothers. Completely. It's, it's amazing. I've uh, brought Jimmy in for a show a few months back, and next thing I know, he and I just became closer than, than, than some of the friends I have in my life. And, and Jimmy's like the, an extension of my family. It's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty bizarre, actually. Right. We like to call it the special relationship. The, oh, whoa. the special, whoa. whoa. Yeah. I'm I don't not, know if I'm I'm not taking shirts off, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was sure. planning on I'm, I'm not the catcher. Peter Bader's got to hit an exit. Uh, now, before I uh, start asking you a question, Rob, I should mention cares. that. See, these guys are reading the chat room right now. Uh, now, I may, we may start getting some death threats or stalker threats on the show because I have to announce that Jimmy is actually. Ashley Esquerda's fiance, if you've watched uh, This Week in Mobile, uh, every every Friday, 6 p.m. Now watch, the, the chat room is just going to blow up right now. How dare you, we will be getting married. Bombs she away. was my one Bombs true love. Uh, you know, I am your ride back, so uh, I have a 9 millimeter under the seat if we yeah, need Yeah, you might want to like duck. But you too, Brute? Hey, too. <laughs> no, you are no. a very lucky man, I'm sure. Many men and women are probably jealous that I you am, are. I am exceedingly lucky. I am definitely marrying up. Oh, oh, Ashley, you listen to this? Wow. She's oh, in the chat room right Is now. Is this a Valentine's Day episode or what? <laughs> I'm it's feeling all warm and sweaty. I'm about to puke. That might just be your chest hairs. <laughs> okay, so Rob, let's, uh, we were talking about chest hairs before. <laughs> anyway, so tell me how you got started in music, which is, a, a, you know, it's a long journey for you. Let's see if we can condense it. Like, give us the highlights. Uh, basically, I, I was very blessed and very lucky to have met my well, one mentor. His name was Marino. And... Okay. Um, Kind of took me under his wing and kind of basically put me in a in a position where I was able to write. Uh, and how old were you at this point? You were a 12. teenager, right? I was 12. Preteen. Yeah, um, I was 12 years old. Started actually sitting down in his living room playing uh, some guitar. Cause, I mean, I've taught myself how to play piano and I taught myself how to play basic guitar. Right. And um, Marino basically kind of pushed me in the direction to start thinking about it as a career and uh, for business than opposed to just some kid playing in his, you know, on his bed. Right. But so, this Marino guy had connections, though. He oh, yeah. wasn't just any Joe Blow. Like, no, tell I, us um, who he was. Marino used to tour with Santana. Um, this was back in the, the, the late 80s. Right. Uh, back in Europe. Uh, back in England, actually. Okay. He's from Hull. Oh, okay. So, um... Really crap football team, but that's fine. That's another topic. Uh, Man U. <laughs> Man U uh, all the way! Yes! Uh, Woo! Chelsea boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so, um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if I said I was going for American football, I don't know if we'd be on the same team, though. It, it was written up there a minute ago. Jets? Yeah. Jets sorry, fan. Sorry. Mark don't Sanchez? hold it against me. Don't hold it against me. It's all good. So, it's all good. But um, we uh, basically, me and Marino basically took me under his wing, and six months into it, he had a script sitting on his uh, table. And uh, I was thumbing through it, and he basically kind of got a little pissed off. He's like, what are you doing? It's like a coffee table material. Yeah. And uh, started reading it and came back the next day with a song that I wrote uh, as the title track of the album. You just wrote a song? I completely just at wrote a, a song. As a 12-year-old? Just, just, just sat there guitar. and wrote it. And, um, you know, it was at this point in my life I can sit and say I've written some really crappy songs and <laughs> that wasn't one of my better ones, but uh, it kind of... Uh, it kind of started this whole, this whole, this whole journey. I mean, it right. really just started. What was the start. title of the song? Kind of dying to know. Oh, it's called Angels Freeway. Angels Freeway. All right, give me just a couple of lyrics. Come oh, on, Jesus. come on. You Can you remember to. the lyrics? This is a refrain. That's not the 405, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's hell. Definitely. It's where the 101 and the 405 yeah. meet. Yeah. That's, no, that's purgatory. It's a bottleneck. That's, that's purgatory. purgatory. Oh, purgatory. You're stuck on it every yeah. day. Uh, there you go. But, yeah, I know um, you are. I read your tweets. Oh my God. Effing LA. Everybody seems to want to leave at 9.30 in the morning. Everybody seems to want to leave to head into the city at 9.30. Yet the other way is completely perfect. But then when you're leaving, it, that's packed, and then the other way is clean. The 4-5 was empty driving up here. It was empty. That's because you're coming on the show. Yeah, true enough. You know, I was really blessed. I needed a helicopter, though, to get from Thousand Oaks to, like, the top of the valley. Well, I I'm really lucky 
Well, just, just you know, growing up and playing with Alex Lidgerwood from the show, from um, from Santana. Right. Meeting Carlos and being able to sit down and actually learn from Carlos. Man, was a that would be experience. incredible. Learning from the guitar master. Um, pretty much just got very lucky with playing with John Waite and the guys from Chicago, Jason Shep and uh, Bill <sighs> Champlin. See, I got a really good education with the. We call them now the older guys of Hollywood. I mean, well, I'm, right. I'm 28 years old, you know, so it's just like. It kind of opened up doors to start working with some newer artists and being able to play with the guys from Daughtry and being able to play with the guys from The Dolls and being able to play with a bunch of the bands that I was able to, to play with. It was really, really just an interesting time. Yeah, that's And every like day I wake up and just bless and look at, you know, look at the collection of guitars. And as uh, your fiance wrote, I've got uh, quite a. a, a um, yeah. A, what did she yeah. write? Do I have yeah. A if I could. <laughs> Just not give you back that seventy-eight Les <laughs> Paul. I'd be a happy camper. I, I look at I look at the things that I've been able to afford myself, and being very lucky with the sponsors that I've had. And you know what? Right. It's, it's just a, it's a blessing. It really is a blessing. Right. And um, you know we're really, you know, been really lucky. That's cool. Well, while we're talking, I want to play um, uh, a little MP3 of your track "I'm Back," which is I, I believe is from your last record, mm -hmm. right? Um, do we have that MP3? I know we do. I know we do. It's called I'm Back, Rob Michaels. Let's play some of that. Now, can you remember any of those lyrics that Tim was asking me oh, for? Oh, I got to hear them. They're bad. No. Just give us a snippet. <laughs> Are we off? No, we no, can, no, we're on. You can remember, he's just choosing to forget. Yeah. If you'd rather well, not, that's fine, but... I see, <laughs> was it, I see my life fade to gray. Now there's nothing left to say. Right. Something, something, something. I'm age of three. I'm 12 years old at this point. That sounds like an Enter Sandman. It's 12 years it old or something bad. like that. Bad. It was just like you know. I opened up a rhyme dictionary and tried to figure out what ran, what rhymed with uh, freeway. Like, oh, okay. highway. That one. Yeah. That, that was one of the <laughs> lyrics probably. But um, the girl who actually sang it was, is a soap opera actress. Her name is Adrian Franz. Oh. What soaps? That watch soaps. She was on uh, Bold and Beautiful. Oh yeah. I she, got it too. She was on um, Sunset Beach years ago. It was like one of her first shows. She's blonde or That's no? That's awesome. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, dude. I know now the Bold and Beautiful. Knows. I know the managers of all the Bold and Beautiful. They have a Super Bowl party. Nice. And she came. Uh, she came from Michigan to California. We met literally. I was 12 or 13, and she she knew Marino. Her mom was her was a stage manager. Was her mom was her manager. Awesome. And, um, and this is while you're 12. Let's yeah. let's not forget. So uh, 12, 13, 14 years old. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in recording studios and. Uh, she came and sang the uh, sang the song. I think I found the master copy somewhere in a box at home. But um, you shouldn't yeah. lose that though, because that's like you know your legacy. That's the Rob Michaels legacy. I have stacks of A dads, and stacks of dat, which wow. nobody uses anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But uh, I've got stacks of crap, and I'm, I'm looking through them, going, oh my god, and, I, and I'll plug them in, and you know, I'll play some of the stuff and go. Wow, that wasn't so good. And then I hear other stuff. I'm like, that was fantastic. Right. What happened? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> weird when you get away from music. Like, when you come back to it, sometimes you love stuff, and then sometimes you're like, what was I thinking? Big time. Big time. By the way, this track rocks. This is like epic rock and roll. Like, it's it's really driving. I, I saw you play the Viker Vi Viker Room. There's such thing as the Viker Room. Yeah, the Viker Room. The Viker Room. Oh wait. The Viker Room. The Viker Room. The Viker Room. The room. The Viker Room is right down the street. It is actually. Um, it's open 24 seven. No, the Viker Room. Legendary Viker Room, which you played, which you played numerous times, but. Like, it was really epic. You brought down the house. I was Thank blown you. away, you know. I, I also blew an amp that night, too. So you did. Great. I know. So there you go. <laughs> Only the best blow their amp. It rocked that hard. That's that right. Really now, a, it's a great song. It's a, it's a great song to play live. It's got a great bounce right. to it. It's just a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun, and I think that really comes comes that's across I, both with Rob and the band. We, that's basically the vibe that I got. When you they use this. They use this track in a movie called uh, Frat Party. Nice. Okay? And it was. I think I was in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did the keg stands with the midgets. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, the scene. He's not joking. <laughs> the scene that 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 this track was in was basically the whole premise is this guy is getting married and he, they're in college. It's his last year, and he's got to drive from I think L.A. to like what was really Santa Barbara, but they made right. it look like it was like 14 hours away. So it's in the middle of the night. They're driving down the highway. And it intercuts with one of the other leads of the movie, basically railing a porn star actress in the shower. So my, my drummer and I, the drummer and I are sitting, are sitting in the movie premiere, okay? We're sitting in the movie premiere, and we're basically watching it, and he and I are like, 
wow, this is not what we, this is kind of cool. <laughs> but at the same time, kind of like, this isn't what we this were. This is awkward. This is really awkward. And then all of a sudden the song comes on. <laughs> and he looks at me, it's like halfway through the movie. And he looks at me and goes, ha ha. <laughs> But, you know, it was, um, Hey, your song's in a movie. It was like, songs in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Listen, if, you're, if, chicks, <laughs> yeah. if you're chicks can dance to your song. Completely. I don't know if she's dancing. Yeah. Wow, well, you the know. horizontal dance. All the strippers so, dance to, like, good hard rock, you know? <laughs> so this Which song, I think that they're doing this song, actually. Honestly, I, I, I was told people have been hearing this in, like, strip clubs and, like, rock the and Rob roll. The Michaels Legacy. Yeah. Now appearing at a strip club. Now, I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm going to go to strip clubs. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, now, speaking of your legacy, it wasn't, it hasn't all been uphill for you. There were some down times for you. Loads of down times. Where, which kind of brought you back to reality and basically made you start all over again and reassess your career and what you wanted to do with music. This actually just happened again not too long ago. It's happened a couple times. Right. And, um, <clears throat> that's the second best kind. I'm sorry, I just read that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not read that comment out. If you're in the chat room, you can read it. Yeah. Also, hey, um... <laughs> you guys, I'm trying to wonder what they're talking you about. You guys, they're talking about the Flatboy movie. They're yeah. talking about your movie. <laughs> nice. Anyway, Don't so, get distracted by that. Yeah. So, um, I love the chat. <laughs> I love it. All right, so back to... Uh, back to the Crash back and Burn to, back. Yeah, Crash and Burn. Party. Awesome. Well, basically, we, um, we, uh, I was... The love of your life, whatever you want to call somebody. Right. Uh, I lost her in November, and um, December, January, or basically the second week, second week of December. Two thousand nine, right? Yeah. They split up. She didn't die. No, okay, because no. I. <laughs> yeah. God I, I, the, I yeah, wasn't that's sure. That's like, that's like, Thank God. you, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure. That's like. It's still uh, like sad, but I was like, <laughs> I'm really condolences. If somebody actually asked me. Somebody actually asked me not too long ago. They're like, you know, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I was like, yeah, God rest her soul, and I make a joke out of everything. <laughs> I went, God rest your soul. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. And somebody goes, what, did she die? I said, no, not that I'm aware, but, you know, good for, good for, you know, but, um, sorry, I'm only kidding. No. But, um, no, we basically, you know, and I spent, uh, I spent a few months pretty much at rock bottom, and I drank a lot. And um, one night, I started just, I picked up a guitar. I kind of took some time off. I was writing, and I finally decided to go back in the studio. I was cutting some tracks with some produ producers in Orange County. Right. Worked on half of this record and, mm -hmm. and um, basically decided to kind of put all the eggs back in the basket and go back again. Put a band together and Jimmy was really instrumental in, in, in setting that up and he you know, really pushed for putting a band together. Right. Sometimes you and, need that um, person. When you're coming out of that hard time, you need someone else to big time. You know, push you back to where he, kn he knew you could be there, you know? Well, it was interesting. When, um, when I met Rob, um, I, I liked the music. Right. Instantly, and and we kind of joked about it early on um, tonight, um, but we really did hit it off. I mean, we really kind of became became fast friends. Right. And um, at that point, that was kind of when he had hit the wall with the record, and we had it's talked the about the last record, right? The current record. The current record. Oh, the, the current. The last okay. record, we we basically I did all on my own, and I had I had a really good team of people that really pushed the record, but right. You know, I wasn't I wasn't in it mentally. I was in a great headspace, and and towards the end of end of the relationship, the end of the record, the the end of the the, the push and whatnot, I was about to take a job playing guitar for someone else again. Right. Which I didn't really want to do. You've done a lot of. Which I've done a lot, lot of. Session. You've been a session guitar for a long time. And I didn't want to do that, and so you know, I really did hit a wall. And Jimmy basically came around, and and some of the material that we recorded was was pretty pretty interesting, yeah. and. Um, you know, I got vetoed a lot of the stuff I came up with. Yeah. Was, but, um, was which, that Jimmy's influence? Well, what was He's interesting... He's vetoed the, the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was interesting was, um, you know, I, 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 I could hear the talent that Rob had, and I know right. that he was just... Dad? Like, I'm not dead. has. Oh. <laughs> um, He's and, not dead either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm very badly burned. <laughs> um, well, you will be shortly. <laughs> he, um... <laughs> I just I, I knew that the talent was there, and like most artists, you you can kind of like run into a, you hit a wall and not feel like you can break out of it right. until someone comes along and says, you know what, don't try this, try that. Right. And once we started working together, and once we really pulled the band together, things really opened up. Um, I think that the the band um, is really taking Rob's already amazing songs to an entirely different level. 
Awesome. Um, we've gone back into the studio um, as a band. Right. And the tracks that we're working on now, the, the entire record's going to be great. And the stuff that Rob did on his own is fantastic. Yeah. Um, of course, the, the rest of the record, where the rest of the band is very jazzed about because we've had an opportunity to, to bring our influences in. Right. And, um, and it's just, it's going to be a great record. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're all really excited about it. In the last studio session that we did, we were just blown away by what we were hearing back, and the songs weren't even mixed yet. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. It's, um, it's, uh, it was the first time, actually, I, I let go of control. Because, I mean, I, I hate to say... Are you a control freak? Completely. Well, you, I've always been, though, because, I mean, really... It's uh, your craft. You have to be, to an extent. It's that. It's that. It's also... I always looked at it like this is my career. Right. You know, and, and I'm going to always make sure that I'm going to be 100% dedicated to my career. I mean, you're, you're the same with what you do. You're the same with what you do. Right. We, I don't you know have to him, but... Yeah, I'm a space cadet, man. I just kind of drift. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I phone it in, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, is that true? Sure? Just show up and be like, huh? Uh, what what the chord is that again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, now, we should mention that the, uh, the new record is called Crash and Burn. And when is it going to be released? Uh, we're looking at uh, first week of November. First week um, of November. This is perfect. Couple of weeks away. At least the first single. So we're, we're, we're really, you know, the boys have basically taken their influences and, and, and given tracks, and we're, yeah. we've been working on everything as a, as a band. Awesome. Let's, yeah, there's the picture of uh, Crash and Burn. Now, if you want to go to Rob's MySpace, go to myspace.com forward slash Rob Michaels Music, or just Rob, it's just Rob Michaels, right? With an S, yeah, Rob yeah, Michaels. Rob Michaels. Uh, all the tracks are there, all the information there, dates. Now, you guys are playing something uh, really exciting coming up, the San Gennaro Festival. It's the... Um, Italiano it, Feast. Completely. It's the, it's the big... Uh, I'm an Italian-American. Uh, my family's, you know, all from Italy, and, and, right. and we own a restaurant here in, uh, in L.A. It's a five-star Italian restaurant. Which is amazing. What Thank restaurant you. is it? Uh, yeah, it's called La Bruschetta. We've what, been 26 for? years now. Where, really? Is it, I need is, to it, go. is it on, uh, don't tell me where, West, uh, is it West LA or like right up the street from Junior's? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's up the other direction towards, uh, towards like right by UCLA. Well, I've been Westwood, there. Right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's my father's restaurant. So we've, you oh, know, that's cool. five-star Italian restaurant and, you know, we, you know, it's, a, it's, uh, it's been my family's dream and business for a very long time. And that's it's awesome. Great, so we got asked to do this big Italian American festival called San Gennaro. Which, which is huge in America. They, they do it in New York as well. It was never huge here. And Jimmy oh, Kimmel really? and Adam Carolla were the ones that basically brought the festival to California. Isn't there Love one tonight? Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel doing something? For Tonight's it? called Prima Notte, which is the first night. Tomorrow's the first night of, um, of the actual festival. That is where Hoffer fan number one was driving to. Oh, okay. That's festival. why he's not in the awesome. chat room. Uh -huh. So you guys are playing that um, Saturday, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if people want to check it out, can they, or do you have to? You have to already buy tickets to it, I believe. No, it's it's five dollars. I think it's it all goes to charity. It's five dollars at the door. Okay, so if you're uh, if you're watching this right now and you want to go and check out Roger, Ro I was going to say Roger Daltrey. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Daltrey's not going to be like there. It. Who are you? you <laughs> Roger Daltrey and George Damn Kennedy. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're really on the show tonight. I'm Burgundy. Do you uh, want to? Yeah, exactly. War, war, uh, Worldcraft. Yeah. <laughs> war, 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 Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is why this show is epic because we can't. If you want to check out Rob <laughs> Michaels and his band play at the San Gennaro Festival, um, head on down. Where where is it going? Where are you guys going to be playing? We're playing the Jimmy Kimmel um, uh, Bud Light stage, the outdoor okay. stage. Um, awesome, which is in Hollywood, right Hollywood in Hollywood. Holly Highland. Hollywood and Highland. Yeah. Yes, it is. I've been there, right next to the Roosevelt Hotel. Yeah, phenomenal and stage. It is really uh, good. Absolutely phenomenal stage. I'm exactly. very excited about playing that oh, show. Oh, that's amazing. I just saw Brandon Flowers play there a couple of weeks ago, so right. that's going to rock. I saw them Crooked Vultures uh, a couple of months ago. Okay, there. you beat me. Oh. Amazing show. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, I think I might come along, actually. I'm, I'm not doing anything on Crooked Saturday. Crooked Vultures Jack White, right? No, uh, no. Dave Grohl. Um, Dave Grohl, Josh, Josh Hame, John Paul Jones. There's all these like, fusion bands. I always forget. Close. Uh. Uh, World of Warcraft, War of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we haven't just got you in the studio to talk. You're here to rock out. Oh, and yeah. we want to hear a track. This is from the new album, Crash and Burn. What's yeah. the name of the track that you guys are going to play? Letting Go. Letting go. And this is, I should, while you guys are getting your guitars, I should mention that no one has heard this track apart from the guys in the studio, maybe the engineers and producers. So this right here on This Week in Music is a first look exclusive performance by Rob Michaels, accompanied by Jimmy Croker, getting married to Ashley Esqueda. <laughs> Everyone out there hates him. <laughs> it's just jealous. All right, take it away, guys. I, I hate him, but I, I'm not, not because of your fiance. You're oh. Just, you're jealous. Don't hate. I'm just it's jealous okay. that. You're Hug? so cool. Hug. I love you. I love you too. Mommy much. cookies. And two, three, four. <laughs> Whoa. 
woke up this morning and my head was in a vice Don't know what I did, but I didn't drink last night My clouds, they fill the sky and I'm too scared to grab my coat Cause all I need is I needed you the most Cause hold on, I know we're gonna be okay And I said holding on, holding on to let you lead the way Walk by faith and I'll be letting go, letting go. I'll let you lead the way. These clouds, they fill the sky and I I don't care All I need is you right here Black clouds, they fill the sky and I I don't know why Cause all I need is I need you tonight Holding on, I'll let you lead the way. Hold on, I know. I'll walk by faith, I'll be letting go, letting go. I'll let you lead the way. So you take me. Please don't break me now. I'm dying. Dying, dying, dying to see Please don't break me Please don't break me Down, down, down Yeah, man. <laughs> that is going to be on, well, it is going to be on uh, Crash and Burn, which is our first week of November. Well, Hold On is going to be our first week of November, I believe. You can go to robmichaels.com um, for more information. You can also go to myspace.com forward slash robmichaels, not Roger Daltrey. <laughs> Rob Michaels, I nice. swear. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, you doing your thing. Yeah, I just can't do the arm twirl on my. That's throw it. My it's just the arm twirl. You just gotta <laughs> practice that. Hey, Betty White could probably do that. You know. Yeah. So it's like you know, yeah. she probably could. Um, so this is gonna be awesome, San Gennaro Festival. Uh, if you're in a, in the LA area on Saturday, check it out. It's five bucks at the entry. Amazing stage, like you said, the Kimmel Bud Light stage. And um, check out what Rob's up to. Keep in touch with him. Tweet him oh, yeah. at Rob Michaels One. 
We um, both Rob and I have a lot of fun on Twitter. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. I, so. I follow both of these guys on Twitter, and honestly, I feel like they're in a Twitterverse of their own. They just write to each other all day. They're probably with sitting next to each other all day. They just write oh. Twitter and back and forth. That's it. It's great. I mean, it's just like we we argue like an old married couple. That, but yeah, that's great. I think, uh, I think most recently um, I came up with blues names for us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did? What, yeah. what were they? I'm, I'm blind Jimmy us. Croker, and he's little little Bobby uh, Michaels. <laughs> Because, you know, anybody calls me Bob or Bobby, my name has a friggin' R in it. You hate that? I, f I hate it. Bob, it's don't call me thing. Bob. Um, it's bad. Bob. Oh, my God. Little, little Bobby Michaels. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of feeling it, man. Little Bobby, dude. I'll stab you. Dude, sweet. I'm coming at you. <laughs> sweet chops, little Bobby. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for the performance. Now, you, are, you guys are going to do another performance, which we're going to put on YouTube as a special uh, performance of his great song, Remember Me, which you may have heard um, if you've checked out his music. Uh, so tune in for that. But it's not the end of the show. We don't want you guys to leave because we do a bunch of reviews at the end of the show. And we like to get the guest's opinion because usually it's very different. And we like people to be honest. If you hate it, say you hate it. I hate it. Oh, wait. Uh, wait no, yet. we haven't started. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that means you're talking about us. <laughs> No, we no love I love the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having us. Oh, on. no, it's a pleasure. We'll have to get you guys back, definitely. Um, but now I believe it's time for some music reviews. All right, we've got some pretty cool clips to show you this week, and they're all very different. That's what I'm, I'm trying to step it up each week. There's so many uh, amazing video clips that come out every day. Uh, so I try and make all three of them very different. So the first one, which you've probably seen and probably heard about at least, is Weezer Memories. Let's check it out. Watching that clip thinking, is that Rivers Cuomo and Co. with the cast of Jackass 3D? You'd be right, because that uh, song is actually featured on the soundtrack. Um, you may have seen Steve O there and Bam Margera, and Johnny Knoxville is featured right at the beginning of the clip, too. So, Tim, you sounded like you were having a great time watching that. I think it was great, man. That guy from Weezer, Rivers Cuomo, he just always, I'm not like a diehard Weezer fan, but he just he, keeps rock and roll interesting, man. That guy, he, he, does. he really does. Like, that video I thought was hilarious. Yeah, it was good. It's definitely one for the guys, I think. What do you guys think? Um, actually, Weezer just um, just did a video with the guys from Autotune the News. I don't know if you guys... Oh, yes, they the did. Gregory right, Brothers. the Gregory Brothers. I've been following those guys for, like, almost two years now. They're hilarious. But they actually did that song, Memory. They gave them the backing track, and they actually auto-tuned the news, and the guys from Weezer yeah. were actually in the video. Oh, that's great. That I'm going to YouTube that. YouTube that. That's awesome. It's great. That is yeah, really cool. Guys are classic. I um yeah I I don't think Weezer could write a bad song if they tried. I mean I, I have I have the utmost respect for anybody that can take the most simplest elements of music. Jack White's a good example. Right. And yes, just definitely. make something that you haven't heard before. Right. You know it's easy to overproduce something. You know throw strings on it, throw this on it, throw yeah. that. But to take a song at its base and do something that's really entertaining, I, I I'm a huge Weezer fan. Right. So, so. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean you know what's so funny about him. He looks like a guy that takes himself too seriously, <laughs> right. but he really doesn't, man. He just, like, in that video, he's getting whipped cream in his face and stuff, and, you know. He's so having a great time. He's having a good time, man. Yeah. I think he's an all right guy. And I think Weezer's new record, Hurley. It's <laughs> a, I'm time. a Lost okay. fan. Yes. I mean, that billboard <laughs> is out. Standing. Well, when the album name album album first was released, they're like, wait, what is, is this got to do with Hurley, the skate brand, whatever? Hey, lawsuits, let's bring him out. But no. It's got nothing to do with Hurley the brand and everything to do with Hurley from yeah. Lost. Like, literally. I mean, it's just genius. The guy. It just, is! He's a marketing genius. <laughs> well, they, they got that picture for the album cover because um, Rivers Cuomo met uh, the guy who plays Hurley. George Garcia. Met him in a party and took that picture. Oh. So it's him and George Garcia next to each other in the picture, and they just took the face of, of the guy, uh, George Garcia, yeah. and used it for the album cover. That is so great, Or oh, I should say I Jorge Garcia. Yeah, Jorge. Jorge, sorry. Uh, 
you know, I'm sorry. I gotta tell you what I did love about Lost, so though. Okay. I gotta Go just on. say it. Just, just say it. it. And I loved Hurley's character. Okay. But you're stuck on a desert island. I know that you thing doesn't say. drop one pound. <laughs> <laughs> He's eating bananas and coconuts. That's the Dama Initiative, my friend. I know. I know. And look, I, I know. think every second person said that. I, I thought the same thing too. All right, let's keep going with the reviews. Uh, the second track is Tiny Tempo, written in the stars, featuring Eric Turner on vocals. Let's check it out. Song on so many different dials Cause I got more f than a disciplined child So when they see me everybody barack, barack, man, I'm like a Okay, so this is the third single off uh, Tiny Temper's debut album Discovery Which is out now um, Tim, your first up, what do you think? I just, you know, it's, I have no gauge for rap I mean, <laughs> really? it looked good, he was in the sky He was, <laughs> he was on know. a building top actually No, I was, listen, he was good It was, right. know, it, what, I, it was great yeah. <laughs> Look, it's pop music. It's, you know, like Jimmy was saying before, they put a lot of production on it. It's one of those catchy tunes. Look, I like going out and having a boogie with my girlfriends, and that's one of the tracks that I'd probably dance to, but I probably wouldn't put on my iPod. But um, it's fun, you know. It's no white boy. White boy's my oh, boy. Oh, white boy. White boy's oh, my he... boy, okay? He was a guest white we had on the show boy. a few weeks ago. Guys, what do you think? Written in the stars? Go Jets. <laughs> Go Jets? Um, okay, I have... I have... Two observations. The okay. first one was, what was with the heavy breathing? What was with the... <gasps> I didn't notice that. It was it was overly apparent. I'm like, does he have asthma? I don't understand. Is he the, was that, is he the guy from the Verizon commercial? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. They're on the, he's on the top of the building? Uh, oh, no. Is I, that the same guy? No, it's uh, not. Then and the other observation I had was, um, it reminded me a little bit of um, a band called Peeping Tom, which uh, features Mike okay. Patton. Oh. Um, it it's, was Mike Patton's uh, more commercial pop project, right. and I could hear that in it. Oh, um, interesting. Oh, it was your Saturday night. Uh, sorry. <laughs> hey, you're trying to say something intelligent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to ruin my moments, Rob? Oh. Um, Twitter, little, <laughs> we'll get little Bobby. Little <laughs> Bobby. I know, <laughs> right? Bobby, little Bobby. Little Bobby, Michael. Trying to little rain on my parade. Oh, <laughs> oh, again. Sorry. Okay, so Mike Patton, Peeping Tom. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not familiar with the artist. What little bit I heard wasn't bad for the genre. Right. Um, it's just that whole heavy breathing thing was kind of odd. I did not notice the heavy breathing. I'm going to have to listen to that again. Really? Maybe it was just someone behind you on the couch. I don't, maybe panting. that was just Rob, like, breathing panting. in your ear. I don't know. No, that's any day that ends in Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not mm -hmm. tomorrow then. Okay, <laughs> so the third track in our review is Katie Tunstall, Fade Like a Shadow. I love this girl. Let's check out the clip. Weird. So choose my No, it is not Katy Perry. <laughs> KT Tunsil, and that's spelled with a K and the letter T Tunsil. She's from Scotland. You may remember uh, her from Suddenly I See, Suddenly I See. Betty, uh, Ugly Betty song, which the song was released before Ugly Betty, but um, if you don't know her, that's, uh, that's the fame that she's from. But she's an amazing singer songwriter from Scotland. What do you think, Tim? Uh, yeah, I She's your kind of chick? <laughs> no, it was cool. She looked good. You know, it's a traditional video of just seeing the band perform. The girl had a lot of conviction, which she I like. She definitely does. You know, it looked um, like she meant it, so kudos. I think she's like, she reminds me of Florence from Florence on the Machine. The way she sings is just with so much heart and soul, and she just puts it out there. There's no, like, wimpiness, no auto-tune. It's just everything you see is raw and real, so I like it. Rob? I, I think she's, I like the first album a lot. She was ingenious in some of the stuff that she was recording, like the song, um, Big black, black horse and the black cherry horse tree. and the cherry tree, yeah. All that in the intro was just her tapping on a on a, uh, a snare drum with the sticks, right? And she basically was just literally just beating everything from the snare drum to the to the stands, and they recorded everything. And that's that's I mean, I think that's she's a great talent. That's musicianship right there. Completely, I think she's a great talent. Yeah, amazing, Jimmy. 
Yeah. Pop music. Really? See, that's so interesting. I thought you guys would be opposite. No, honestly. But I, I look at it in the standpoint, in the production standpoint, and, right. and a writing standpoint. She can write a great song. And, she, and granted, it is pop. Yeah. She can write a hell of a track. Yeah. And, and to be fair, my tastes tend to lean more towards underground music. And apparently okay. you hate everything. Yeah, apparently I hate everything. <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, right. Eagles of Death Metal. What do I call them? Sex Pistols. Arctic the, Monkeys. Yeah. Arctic yeah. Monkeys, okay, which fire. are brilliant. <laughs> no, I haven't really gotten into them. Really? Um, yeah, I just I haven't really been exposed to them, so I can't say either Ooh, way right. if I like them or not. Okay, fine. Oh yeah. So, but what li what little bit I'm gathering <laughs> yeah. from the news, they're kind of gigantic d bags. So, I'm not well, so sure. I mean, you know, they may not be everyone's taste, but right, right, you right. know, they're definitely a band of the moment. They're mm -hmm. doing great things, so they've got a good sound. So. It is pretty cool, but um, yeah, that's the music review that we have for this week. That's so distracting. I'm watching myself uh, in the... Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so now don't forget to check out robmichaels.com. Go to myspace.com forward slash robmichaels. You can find him on Twitter at... Uh, not at this is Asher. That's me! What's wrong with my head today? It's at robmichaels1. Don't forget the one or you'll contact someone else. And also, if you're in the LA area, what's your parents' restaurant again? La Bruschetta? La Bruschetta. And what's the ro name of the road that it's on? Westwood Boulevard. Westwood Boulevard um, in LA. Quick quick story. Yes. When I first started working with Rob, he said, um, why don't you come down to the restaurant? Uh, you know, let's come down to the restaurant. When the restaurant closes, we'll sit, we'll play acoustically, and we'll, we'll kind of feel each other out. And I said, all right, right. cool. And I came in, and I, I'm, I'm a little Italian. I'm Irish and, and Italian, but okay. predominantly Irish. And I walked in, perfect. and his dad comes up to me, and his dad comes up to me in just th that amazing Italian, you know, it's a pleasure to meet you, I understand you're working with Rob. Three feet you're, of fury. You're part of a family now, what do you want to eat? Sit down, whatever you want to eat, you tell me, I'll get it for oh, you. That's nice. And I was just like, wow, this is great, I'm, I feel at home. You feel like part of the family now. And the food is just amazing. You've been it, there, it you've yeah. for it. It doesn't ha uh, hurt that you're afraid of my father, because I mean, three feet of fury really is. Yeah, there's three oh. feet of just, Italian fury, completely. Italian or Sicilian? Because no, Italian. Is, okay. Italian's Italian. I don't care if you're from Sicily. I don't care if you're from. Okay. Bo you name it. You're Italian. Right. But um, now we're we're northern Italian. Hence the light skin and the wine. The, the, the whole okay. pasty <laughs> complexion <laughs> thing. I don't get out much. I live in, I live in a studio, or you know. Right. No, that's I, it. You both are basically living in the studio. Now you're starting to come out of the woodworks and play festivals and. Yeah, big time. Then we go back to the studio. The life of the musician, eh, Tim? You know all about that. Yeah, I'm sort playing of. bars, you know. <laughs> Serious musician over here. Uh, uh, now, Jack, of course, Jack Daniels? <laughs> I, that's scary. I just try to stick it's with beer, light beer, anything. I do. Um, <laughs> I fall apart like a dollar watch, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, something that's not going to fall apart like a dollar watch is that at the end of the show, I like to end the show with a bit of music trivia. And this week uh, is trivia is about filmmaker. Uh, uh, I cannot speak today. I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm, I'm Filmmaker <laughs> Mark Romanek. Um, now, he's actually, his adaption of Kazuo Ishiguro's, I have to look at that, dystopian novel, Never Let Me Go, um, opened its US release on four screens uh, just this last, last week. Though he's directed three full-length feature films since 1985, Static, One Hour Photo, great film, and now Never Let Me Go, Romanek is actually best known for his music video directing. Uh, now, few directors could actually turn a music video into visual poetry better than Mark Romanek. Do not forget this name. He was one of the class of directors that included Spike Jonze, Michael Gondry, and Anton Corbin, and he captured some of the 90s biggest acts um, in his camera. There was Lenny Kravitz's Are You Gonna Go My Way? Everyone's seen that video clip. Nine Inch Nails' is Closer, which is one of the freakiest, weirdest bleh, video clips of all time. And of course, Johnny Cash in the Flemish painting come to life oh, on her. Oh, Johnny Cash. And of course, most famously, Michael and Janet Jackson's Space Odyssey Scream, which is obvious, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's the most expensive clip of all time. It actually isn't. Um, Guinness actually got it wrong. It isn't. Uh, nevertheless, Romanek retired from music video production in 2005 <clears throat> to focus full time on filmmaking. And you can actually watch all of his videos and more. Um, you know, by David Bowie, Beck, Madonna, Jay-Z, Fiona Apple at markromanek.com. <coughs> Romanek is spelled R-O-M-A-N-E-K.com. But uh, the video that we're going to show, what do you think we're going to show? I'm hoping for Johnny Cash. Yes. I was That's gonna... what I'm hoping for. Well, 
You're right. You're yes, right, Beto. Ash, okay. because... High five. Yes. Good, we're good thinking, on you. We're thinking the same. Yeah. Uh, this week's mu music trivia clip is Johnny Cash's cover of Trent Reznor's Hurt. I actually oh, like good. Johnny Cash's version better. Sorry, Trent Reznor. You are a genius, but I like Johnny Cash's version. I don't know, I don't know too many people that have not been moved emotionally by exactly. that Exactly. It makes um, me cry. That was the last thing he did, too, before he before died. Before he died, yeah. yeah. I had uh, I had read somewhere that uh, they had asked Trent about that, right? You know, and he said, you know, once Johnny did it, it became his song. Exactly. It's, he's like, right. it's not my song anymore. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Sweet. It it's is the last um, album that he made before he uh, uh, passed away. Uh, the album The Man Comes Around was actually produced with Rick Rubin, mm -hmm. a great producer. Beastie so, Boys. So, pardon? Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys, Linkin Park, everyone Metallica, basically. Metallica, Chili Peppers. Ooh, Rick Rubin? He's yeah, out, right? everything. See, yeah. like anytime he gets involved with a project, a it's too? amazing. He did, uh, this, oh, I think, uh, Plinkerton. I think yeah. Plinkerton, Plinkerton, yeah. There you go. Uh, he's a good guy, that guy. So, what's he the is. trivia? So the trivia, well, I just wanted you to know about Mark <laughs> Romani. It's not like oh. a question like, guess what? So I just wanted to, you know, throw a bit of music knowledge out there. But we're going right. to end the show with Johnny Cash's Hurt. So thanks to the guys for coming in. Rob Michaels, Thank you awesome. Thank awesome. You for awesome performance. Uh, bit of beta. Great job of the news today. Are you yawning? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Late night last night, the checkout girls played. He did, man. his band played last night, it was awesome. So we'll see you next time, guys. Keep in touch with us, download us on iTunes. Here's Johnny Cash and Hurt. See you later. I hurt myself today. To see if I still feel I focus on the pain The only thing that's real The needle tears a hole The old familiar sting Try to kill it all away but I remember everything What have I become My sweetest friend